So who can give me a definition of corporate governance? What does it say? What is corporate governance? It's concerned with the holding the balance between the economic and social issues and between individual and community goals. Balance between economic and social and what else? And social goals and between individual and community goals. Okay. Any other definition you can find? Any other definition of corporate governance? There may be some different ones. Yes? Uh, it is also an issue for government companies, government companies and public and private. Private and public companies. Okay, and private and public partnerships. Corporate government, so it's a system. It's a system of checks and balances. So, if everybody in the world was very honest, right, we wouldn't need corporate governance as much. The problem is that everybody is not honest. So it's not, it's like a system that checks and balances, check that the people are not taking advantage. So, in this class we're going to discuss the kind of developments that we've had in corporate governments and the law. We're going to focus on Anglo-American corporate governance, which is different from Korean or Japanese or German corporate governance. Okay? Uh, but most of the large company, world's biggest companies is in the US. They use the Anglo-American corporate governance. Okay? Uh, Germany and Japan, Korea use a slightly different type of corporate governance. We'll just discuss briefly. Okay? We look at the kind of international standards we have, and we'll talk about uh, corporate accountability. So organizations are run by managers, not shareholders. So most large companies today are most are joint stock corporations. Okay. Uh, if you studied the financial management, we did a little bit of history on the joint stock corporation. Joint stock corporation uh, was very important for the progress of the world. Okay? So a good example of this is the railroad. In the US they built the railroad. Do you understand railroad? The trains? Yes. Can one person pay for the all the railroads in the US? No. Or one bank? Bill Gates. Hmm? Bill Gates came. Bill Gates? I don't think even Bill Gates could pay. Why? Because we have to build a bridge. You know the bridges, like the Golden Gate Bridge in California? Those bridges are not cheap, right? You can find a lot of rail bridges across the US. So, did the railroad in the US help the US to develop or not? What do you think? Helped a lot or didn't help a lot? Helped a lot, right? We can see some countries, if we look at the rail map of Africa, very little railway line, okay? So the railroad helped the US to develop. But how did they pay for the railroad? How did they, they pay for the railroad in the US? They use the US stock. Yeah, stocks and bonds. Okay? So people put their money together. Everybody put their money together and they brought stocks and bonds in a joint stock corporation. Okay? So the joint stock, we can buy stocks and bonds in the joint stock corporation. A lot of people, we're going to focus on stocks, but for the railroads they mainly use bonds. Okay? So it means that you give me some money as a bond, and I pay you 5% interest every year. And then if you want, you can get your money back at the end of a certain time, like 10 years. Okay? So you give me a million dollars, I'm the railroad company, I pay you 5% a year. Are you happy? 5% a year? Because my railroad is making a profit. Okay? 
and I can, you can get some of the profits. So bonds is not ownership, but stock is ownership. So you can actually own the railroad company, a part of the railroad company with me together. Okay? If the railroad company does well, you get more money. If the railroad company doesn't do well, you don't get as much money. Okay? But what do you think is the problem here? We all buy stock. All you guys buy stock in the railroad company. Can you all manage the railroad company? Are you going to manage the railroad company? Mm -hmm. Who's going to manage the company then? If you guys all own part of the stock in the railroad company, who is going to manage the company? You're going to appoint a manager, okay? So the stockholders, you are all called stockholders or owners or shareholders. They're the owners of the company and they're going to appoint a manager or managers to run the company. Okay, great. Okay. So let's say you all are the owners, you all bought, put some money together to make a joint stock corporation to build the rail and run the railroad. Okay? So well done, you're making a good profit. And now I'm the manager. Do you trust me? Why not? <laughs> Why don't you trust me? <laughs> Why don't my face doesn't look very nice? <laughs> what does that mean? Like, I mean, if I must stop, add a stock into me, I can trust the manager. Why not? Because, like, uh, yeah, there's no there's guarantee he can make a profit. What do you think the manager might do? Be honest, like they just need to show the situation clearly. But what what could they do that would affect you? Like what? then we can decide like we should sell the stock or we should keep the stock. Yes, but what could the manager do that's bad for you? Well, if they hide and we can sell at the right proper time, like for example, like the price of the stock going to decrease and yeah. So what would the manager do that's bad for you? What kind of thing? Can anybody tell me? What bad things can the manager do to harm the stockholders? How can the managers harm the stockholders? Yes, just they don't care, right? They don't care. Lazy. Okay? Just don't make an effort. Okay? What about stealing? Stealing money? Okay? High salary, too high salary. Okay? Conditions are too good for the managers. Make very good condition. So we can have the, we have the situation today in the companies, right? <coughs> because we have a lot of small stockholders, maybe they can't control the managers very well. Okay? We can see that the managers, can, the CEOs, can give themselves very high salary, and they can give themselves some good conditions, even if they get fired. Okay? We can see they can do some fraud, fraud like accounting fraud in Enron. Okay? Pretend everything is fine, and the stockholders think, oh, everything is okay. Okay? But actually, everything is not okay. Okay? Is there some problem? Do you understand fraud? false accounting. So because of this issue, we have corporate governance. Okay? So this, but one thing that could be very dangerous is think about, what about if the managers uh, lose a lot of money or they cause some accident because the manager did some wrong thing, okay? and then you guys have to pay more money than you invested. Would you invest in the company in that case? Let's say that there's an accident on the railroad. 100 people die. Okay? So the railroad loses all the money in compensation. And on top of that, they don't have enough money. So now they're going to blame you. You're the owners of the company. So you have to pay more money. Let's say you bought $1 million of stock. But that's not enough. You have to pay more money. You have to sell your house pay more money. Now are you going to buy stock in the company? It's too risky, right? So the government brought in a law called limited liability. Limited liability means 
that people who buy stock in the stockholder company can only lose their investment. No more. So they're not liable. Do you understand liable? Liable means I have to, liability means I'm the fault and I have to pay the money. Okay? So stockholders have limited liability. So that's one way. They don't have to trust the manager too much because if the manager makes a big mistake, anyway, they just lose their stock. They don't lose any more money. If you are just a private company yourself, you don't have limited liability. Okay? You have to sell the house. You, you, you cause big problems with your company, you're going to have to pay your own personal money and house to the victim. Okay? But in the, limit, in the joint stock corporation, no. The owners have limited liability. Okay? The reason they made that law was to make everybody invest the money together. Okay? Do you know Thomas Edison? Nikola Tesla? Tesla? Famous people who developed electricity? Around that time, the same idea, right? They got the money, a lot of money, from investment banks and stocks, which allowed them to make a big corporation and develop electricity and other things, okay? So the Joint Stock Corporation, important thing in history, allowing people to put their money together, a lot of people to put their money together, then because we have a lot of people putting their money together, we can work on big projects and make big companies, okay? What are some of the world's biggest companies today? Can you tell me the names? What are the names of the world's biggest companies? Microsoft. Microsoft, Joint Stock Corporation. Apple. Apple, Joint Stock Corporation. Coca-Cola, Joint Stock Corporation. Anybody can buy. You can buy the stock in Coca-Cola if you want. Okay? Walmart. Hmm? Walmart. Walmart, Joint Stock Corporation. Public company. Facebook even, Joint Stock Corporation, okay? So we're talking about the Joint Stock Corporation. So at the start, the main point was, this was a system to put in place to monitor the managers. Do you understand monitor? Watching or checking the managers. Ensure that the organization's obligations are met. And make sure the managers are doing their job properly for society and also for the shareholders, okay? So we can come back over here and look at this definition. We're balancing, okay, the manage we're balancing between the economic and social goals and individual and community goals. So we're making sure the manager is doing that properly, making the right balance. Okay. Since the 90s, we have increasing attention on corporate governance, such as the Enron scandal and the Wall Street scandal that we looked at, okay? They were problems of culture, but also corporate governance. Uh, we said corporate governance is also an issue for government companies. Even though, though we have the Joint Stock Corporation, we have many problems in the government companies. Like, one problem in the government company is that the government politician can try to interfere. Okay? So the government company may want to make a short-term goal. Do you understand short-term goals? For example, a very simple example of short-term goals is the government used to run the central bank. Do, do you know central bank? Prints money, right? So, what do you think the government did before an election? Print more money or, or destroy money? When the government used to, nowadays, the government don't run the central bank anymore, they're independent. But let's say 100 years ago, 150 years ago, the government runs the central bank. Central bank controls the money supply. Okay? They can print money. So what do you think the government did? Election is coming up. There's an election next year. What are they going to do? Destroy. Hmm? Destroy money? Yes. Everybody has less money? Everybody feels sad? Well, but are they going to vote for the government in the election? But if we make a lot of money, it can be cause of the inflation. Yes, but does it cause inflation in the short term or the long term? Long term. Long term. Will the inflation be there by next year? No. So, what's the government going to do? Print money and increase the money supply in the economy, okay? And then everybody feels happy. 
then we get elected the next year, but then in the future we have problems with inflation. Okay? So because of this problem, and especially during the war, the government used to print a lot of money during to make war, right? The government doesn't run the central bank anymore. The central bank is an independent organization. So it's the same for companies. The government can try to just make some short-term policy for the company, just so it looks good, just for the next election. Okay? But that's why we need corporate governance for the government companies too, to make sure the government is not just thinking in the short term. Okay? We can see, perhaps even in the financial crisis, the government made the regulation to make everybody wealthier by increasing the house price helping the house price to increase. Then everybody is happy, then we can get elected in the next election, right? We can increase the house price, make some regulation to increase the house price. So these days, in my opinion, they should take housing regulation away from the government. Because nowadays, one way of increasing people's wealth, government can print money, but they can try and interfere in the housing market and make housing price go up can make everybody feel wealthier and short-term benefit, like we saw in the Wall Street crisis. Okay? So if we have some independent organization also for the housing, it would be better. That's just a side point. Okay? So just we have to understand for government companies, we also need corporate governance to make sure it's been run properly. So you said that you didn't trust me, right? Do you think generally People are trustworthy or untrustworthy? What do you think, generally? Untrustworthy. So this is an agency effect, okay? Assumes that people are at heart untrustworthy. So we just assume, it's just a theory, right? We assume that we can't trust anybody, okay? Which is better, to assume that we can trust everybody or we can't trust anybody? <coughs> which do you think? Which people will have lose their money more quickly? People who trust everybody or people who don't trust anybody? Person who, Person who trusts everybody, they might lose their money quite quickly, right? Uh, we can see a lot of cases of famous rock stars and football players and so on, right? They trust their friend or their best friend or even their sister or their father with their accounts, with all their money. But then they lost all the money, right? Uh, in the US, I think 50% of the sports stars are declared bankruptcy ten years after they, ten years after they uh, retire. Right? They tend to trust people too much with their money. So the managers of a company have a duty to work for the owner's benefit. Okay? Managers have control over information, and they can use this for their own advantage. So managers can increase their pay. They can change the information, increase their bonus. So, can we trust the managers not to pay themselves too much? Right? This theory says no. So this is called the agency effect. Do you understand agent? What does agent mean? What does agent mean? Agent means somebody is working for somebody else. I'm an agent working for someone else. Okay? So the agency effect is, we, even though they're working for us, we can't trust them 100%. <clears throat> so we can see that we need corporate governance because, and better corporate governance, because failure of large corporations can harm society. Okay? We saw the failure of Enron harm the society. If you watch the movie, do you like Jim Carrey? One with Dick and Jane. It's about the story of Enron, but they make another company like Enron, which failed, and the guy was working for the company, and then he loses his job, so he loses his house, right? And then they, he, in the end, they, they start trying to steal, steal things. They turn to break the law, okay? So if you like Jim Carrey, you can watch that movie. You can learn about the problem on society. The movie was about how the failure of Enron harmed the society. Okay? So if a large company fails, the 
managers are dishonest, it affects not just the stockholders, but also the workers, the local communities. Okay? Everybody is affected. Uh, we also need corporate governance because we have some psychopaths. Do you understand psychopaths? Are you a psychopath? They did some research and they found out that 20% of CEOs are psychopaths. Because sometimes the psychopaths, in some occasions, the psychopaths can get to the top more easily. Why? Because the psychopath doesn't, they have no conscience or empathy or concern for others. That's what psychopath means. Okay? It means that even though I hurt you, I have no feeling. Do you understand? I don't care that I hurt you. So, it means that if I don't care about other people, or I don't care about hurting other people, or damaging other people, it might be easier for me to get to the top. Okay? Like we saw in the video about Enron, some guys said that they would step on the throat, do you understand, step on the throat of the other people, to get a higher salary or more money, right? That's like a psych psychopathic behavior. Okay? Don't have any empathy for other people. Are any psychopaths in here? <laughs> Maybe we have one. <laughs> Judging by the... Why are you looking at your face? <laughs> huh? Maybe we have one. Judging by the law of averages, right? Maybe you know who you are. You really don't care about other people. Right? <laughs> so, on the other hand, we have 80% of the CEOs are using positive organizational ethics, not psychopaths, right? 80%, but 20% of uh, psychopaths. So because of the 20% of psychopaths who are working as CEOs, we need to uh, have corporate governance to control them, okay? Otherwise, they, if they have no conscience, do you understand no conscience? Yeah. They can damage people, damage society, okay? For example, in the case of the Ford Pinto, Maybe the CEO was a psychopath. They said, oh, people will die, doesn't matter, right? We, we don't want to lose money. We don't want to lose money, so it doesn't matter if people die. So that's like psychopathic behavior. So, then finally, corporate governance can help us to improve the performance of the company, generally, and make a better profit. So that's why we have a corporate governance. So, we can check do companies have a good uh, system of corporate governance or not? Uh, <clears throat> there are rating, like rating agencies who look at the company, look at their system of corporate governance and give them some rating. So we're going to look at this because it helps us to understand about uh, what kind of things makes uh, strong corporate governance and what kind of things makes weak corporate governance? Do you know Yahoo Finance? You love Yahoo Finance? Huh? Think about it every day? If you study the financial management, you know about Yahoo Finance. So here we have Microsoft. If you want to find Microsoft, we just type in the top Microsoft here, and Microsoft comes up. Okay? Then on the side, we have profile, company, profile. Do you understand profile? They have a summary of the business. They develop, license, and support software products. And up here, they have corporate governance score. I don't know if you can see this, but it's in the company profile. Okay? Corporate governance. Can you read here? Microsoft Corporation's ISS governance quick score is 6. The pillar scores are Audit 2, Board 1, Shareholder Rights 5, Compensation 8. So let's check and see what do those things mean. Okay. So ISS, gives the, ISS is the organization that gives the scores. Okay. So this is their website. So... Uh, we see that 10 is the high score and uh, uh, 1 is the low score.